Uh, let, let me just, I guess, get on the record, uh, uh, Secretary Panetta, that there will be some of us at this table, and I would be one of them, that would be opposing another BRAC round, for, really for two reasons. One, uh, that you, I think we have reduced our force, our capability to an unacceptable level, and to bring our infrastructure down to meet what I consider to be, as a member of this committee, an unacceptable level, I think is something I would not want to do. And then the second thing is, the problem we are facing right now is really an immediate uh, problem. We are we're, everything's on fire. We are trying to put out the biggest fires. And uh, I am going from memory now, but as I recall, all of these BRAC rounds, and I have been here since the very first one, uh, you lose money in the first five years. So it is not going to really gain anything in terms of that. Just, so there is going to be opposition up here. And Secretary Panetta, I, I saw you on 60 Minutes, and I I didn't envy you when you had to answer the the question to stop and think about how many uh, how many combat operations there are, and you started counting on your fingers. So uh, it it is something that we've been talking about here. It is something that's very serious. But when you talk about the budget, I just want to get in here so that now that we have the president's new budget, if you if we keep hearing about in you know inheriting deficits and all of this during the eight years of Bush, uh, those this OMB's figures. <laughs> It was right at two trillion dollars. This president, in his budget that he's proposed, is five point three trillion dollars in just four years. So obviously, you're talking about just a, a huge amount of money. I saw in this morning's uh, in this morning's Washington Post, they're talking about everything is growing in government except there it is, uh, military. And, and I agree with the statements of the two uh, previous uh, speakers that this is supposed to be our number one concern up here defending uh, our country. So anyway, I just um, would like to um, not press the thing that's already been talked about enough on risk, but I only ask the question, when you actually meet with the, the chairman and you come up with your risk assessment, when did you say that would be? I anticipate it will be over here by the end of the month. Okay. Um, one of the commands that doesn't get a lot of attention is AFRICOM. And we uh, remember when that was divided into three commands. I think everyone in this room uh, knows that we have done the right thing. However, I kind of look at it as the forgotten command. It doesn't seem to get the attention. One of the things about AFRICOM is it gets its resources from the U.S. Special Forces that are in, in, uh, in Europe. Uh, and right now, it, accepting the fact that as the, the uh, pressure gets on in the Middle East, a lot of the terrorism, the potential terrorism is going down through Djibouti and the Horn of Africa and spreading out there. So one of the great things that is happening with Africa is the Special Forces are training the Africans. And the number breaks down to about one Special Force guy or gal is going to be responsible for 100 forces. And I've seen this down there. I know it's happening. So the question I'd ask you: Do you think there are impacts uh, by moving out of the uh, UCOM the uh, some of the special forces, insofar as Africa is concerned? Uh, first of all, I, I agree with you on the on the benefits of having an Africa command focused on those uh, issues in the in that continent on that continent. And um, actually, we source our requirements into Africa and elsewhere through a global force management process. And so it tends to be that European South have a particular habitual relationship, but there could be special operating forces and, for that matter, general purpose forces employed in Africa. It's, it, we, we move the force around where it's needed. And so I don't think uh, the uh, issue you, des you described there with UCOM will have any effect on okay, Africa. That, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. And I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, in looking at the, uh, at the reset, we are going to be looking at a real problem after having gone through this for 12 years, and it is going to be my concern is that it comes from the right sources, that it is not going to come from the uh, base budget. Uh, is it your intention to have this come from the OCO when this uh, time is before us? Do you think it will have a deteriorating effect on the base budget, on the reset, the cost of reset? Uh, that's exactly why the OCO bill tends to be as high as it is, because we're not just looking at the cost of current operating forces. It's it's the recapitalization challenge we face beyond that. Is that a fair statement, Bob? Yeah. Okay. The last thing I because my time has expired, but I want to uh, I, I had occasion to go down to Fort Worth and see the progress. What's happening right now with the F thirty five? 
and there have been a lot of delays, and I, I would just hope that we have a, a commitment from the two of you uh, to progress on that program because of that very needed platform that we, that we will be pursuing. Sen Senator, we need a, a fifth generation fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, the F-35 represents that fifth generation fighter. We are committed to it. We, we just want to make sure it is done right. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Inhofe. Senator